that working? Yeah? All right. Um, I was supposed to introduce myself. My name is Ethan Abramson. I'm the event host for today. Uh, I have a furniture company in New York. I also make content and I host a lot of woodworking tool and maker events such as this. Um, enough about me. Uh, we're going to get into our first talk, our first web talk. Uh, number one, find your voice, find your workforce, how to start spreading the news on careers at your company and in the wood industry. And this is presented by Kelly Victor Burke. She's an entrepreneur, woodwork manufacturer advocate and educator who taught for 30 years at Eastern Michigan University until her retirement in April 2020 to concentrate on her growing woodwork manufacturing business, Burke Architectural Millwork, or BAM. Kelly and her husband slash business partner, Barry, founded BAM in 2016 to disrupt the status quo in the woodwork industry and bring positive recognition to the field of architecture millwork manufacturing. BAM is Michigan's first and only WBENC certified WBE in custom architectural millwork. As a woodwork manufacturer advocate, Kelly has conceived of and led teams of dedicated innovative, innovative business owners, educational partners, and industry organizers to create the first 21st century approved Department of Labor registered apprentice in woodworking, woodworking manufacturing specialist. She drafted the initial framework to address the employment gap in the wood products industry through cross-training and upskilling new and existing employees in a combination of CAD, uh, wood processing, coatings, estimating, and project management. And without further ado, our first speaker, Kelly. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So I am so thrilled and honored to be here to kick off the AWFS Web Talks for 2021 with a topic that I am deeply passionate about and one that my company is actively engaged in and that is advocacy and the merits of finding your voice as a way to find your workforce. But first, before we go any further, I have some questions for you. How many of you think recruiting is going to get harder over the next decade? Don't be shy, raise your hand, I see you back there. Awesome, okay. Now, Second question, how many of you are looking for ways to get your company's voice heard to fill those current and future positions? So don't be shy, let me hear you. What, I don't hear you. How many of you are looking for your voice? Okay, I see a couple of timid hands. Well, I'm here this afternoon to share some of my thoughts on why your company should find your voice and how to create a flexible, customizable template on how to get your message, which is your story, out above the noise. And I'm gonna share with you my own five advocacy S's. And that is so hard to say. I challenge you to say that five times fast. But why communicate? Right? That's the question. Why communicate and why find your voice? I'd like to make the case for why your company should go to the effort to do this. And I think we've all seen headlines like this. Am I right? We've all seen headlines, headlines like this. And in this industry, right now, we have all of these good jobs, and yet we can't find enough talent to fill them. But folks, I'm here today to tell you that actually this is going to get harder in the future. And there's a big reason why. And let me share it with you. It looks like this. Over here, this is a population pyramid. I know you guys are so excited that you're actually seeing a population pyramid, maybe for the first time. This is a representation of a country's population, and this is for the United States. And what it does is that it takes the population and it divides it by the number of males and females in the population. But more interesting for our conversation this afternoon is the age. 
that is, again, being represented by the number of population. And you'll notice up here almost at the top are the baby boomers. So, hey, boomers, we see you, right? But I think that it's more interesting to look down here at the bottom. In red, I put where you find 18 and younger. Notice it's shrinking, right? It's shrinking. On the right here is the table that's telling us exactly the same thing. What is the percentage of this country's population that is under the age of 18? And notice through the years, it's in decline. So we have fewer children, right, in our population. And what does that mean? That means that our struggles to find workers now is only going to become more difficult in the future because there is a smaller number of younger people that are going to be growing up and joining the labor pool in our country. And that means that all of our country's industries, not only our industry, but all of the industries and all of our individual companies are going to be competing against each other for our employees. So for Lois at Periwinkler's, we're gonna be competing against each other, right? So, if we look here, another thing that I'd like to tell you about is that there's a lot of attention that is being paid to Generation Z. So all of you Gen Zs out there, hi, we see you. But I want to advocate to you that we should actually be focusing our attention right now on Gen A, Generation Alpha. Generation A is made up of children that have been born since 2010 and children that have not even been born all the way up to 2025. That's right, you guys. I'm here this afternoon to tell you we need to be focusing on Gen A. People like my grand niece, Stella, there she is, she's so cute. She's actually going to start kindergarten this fall, and she is a representative of the class of 2034. This is where I think we need to have our attention turned to. So the real question is, right, how do we get young people, these fewer young people, how do we get the message out to them about the wood industry so that when they grow up and enter the workforce, they choose our industry? And of course, really that question is, how do we get young people into our industry? Because we continue, we must continue as the wood industry to look at some real challenges like the issues of gender and diversities. And despite the good work and the inspiring work that's being done, by all of these organizations that are coming together to bring awareness to our industry. And by the way, have you all checked out this amazing video that just was launched, Get to Know the Wood Industry? It is so inspiring. If you haven't seen it, I definitely want you to because you might be able to find an opportunity to showcase it, okay? So despite the amazing and the inspiring work that's currently being done, I have to tell you that we still have work to do. And yes, that's Lois right there. Shout out to Lois from Periwinkler's. She's doing work, but we still have more work to do. So finding your voice. Like I said, I'm very passionate and committed to advocacy. And I also believe that companies should find their voice 
to advocate for themselves as well. So my company is only five years old. We employ less than 10, and we are tucked away in just an ordinary, nondescript commercial complex. We're nowhere special. But yet, people often comment on how present we are in the community and also on social media, right? And so for us, it's about finding and using our voice to tell the story about who we are as a company and industry. It's a simple and authentic goal to tell the story not only about our work, but to lift up our employees and our industry as a whole. Because we're doing incredible things. The goal is to have people notice us and be attracted into the field. I consider this simple and authentic. And this has led to some incredible results, including having people pursue us to get a job at our company. This is true. People ask us to get them a job, not the other way around. And having that opportunity to work with a bunch of dedicated individuals and companies on a new Department of Labor apprenticeship called Woodwork Manufacturing Specialist. To work and to get that approved has been an amazing journey. And now it's time for a shameless plug. So if you are interested in hearing more about the new apprenticeship, which is approved and registered by the Department of Labor, I would like to invite you to a educational session that is going to be led by Mark Smith right there, the country's first woodwork manufacturing specialist apprentice, Logan Leinbach, right there, and myself. It's going to be tomorrow upstairs at 1.30 p.m. We invite you. It is free. And we would love to have you come and hear more about how you can adopt this apprenticeship for your company. All right, so we're back. So while advocacy is working for us at Burke Architectural Millwork, I think it will work for your company. So my spin on things is the five advocacy S's. And let me show you what it could look like for you and your company. Are you with me? All right. We're going to school it. We're going back to school, everybody. We're going to show it. Ooh, we got to sell it. Send it. That's really important. And then, everybody, we got to survey it, right? So let me show you. Let's school it, everybody. Educate everyone. Educate everyone. So a lot of companies are looking at high schools and CTE programs. Mm, that's a great thing. But again, I'm all about going after even younger people. Make a relationship with your local school district and go to the elementary schools. In Michigan, believe it or not, in elementary school, they do a unit over wood. And the principal at one elementary loves us and brings her students into our company. Amazing. They love it. They love it. And so schooling and doing it younger. Don't forget about your colleges, your universities, and your trade show. Go and introduce yourself. That's so important. Say, hey, you want to come to my shop? You know, that's very, very powerful. Elected officials. Oh, my goodness. Elected officials, an untapped avenue for you to get your message out. They are representing you. They want to know, do you need help? What can they do to help you? 
Just last week, both Logan was meeting with our congresswoman, and then the week prior, I was meeting with a congresswoman. It's truly empowering, and you get noticed, and your story and your tale of problems and workforce development issues, they get noted. And then there are, you know, workforce organizations, and then there's just the people in the grocery line. People in the grocery line that make the mistake of looking at my logo and say, you're an architect. Isn't that awesome? Well, I hope they're not in the express lane because I'm giving them a 20 minute tutorial about architectural millwork. It doesn't have to be 20 minutes, folks. I advocate coming up with an elevator pitch from the 57th floor of the wind down to the lobby. All it's gonna take, who you are as a company, and then who you are as an industry. Because remember, it's not just about individual companies. We're in it big time. So who we are as an industry. Get that, and then you can school it. It could look something like this. So if you haven't heard about Manufacturing Day, then that's the one thing that I really want you to consider as a takeaway. So before COVID, it was all face to face, and I'll show you some pictures a little bit later. But because of COVID, last year and this year, we're doing it as a webinar, as virtual. So powerful, because guess what happened? When it went virtual last year, about 50 to 60% of all the companies that did Manufacturing Day bowed out. So I had even more students that were interested in attending. So putting together a PowerPoint. I love PowerPoint, right? Telling a, having a message that is to the specific audience. Is it just, you know, school children? Or could it be workforce development agencies? Be authentic with your message and then looking for opportunities to share it. So this one PowerPoint that I put together for Manufacturing 2020, I actually have revised it minimally to meet the different audiences about six times. Because every time someone says, hey, will you do a virtual event for the Workforce Development Agency of Michigan or the Center of Creative Studies or SEMCOG, whatever, I'm there. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Then it could look something like this. So a lot of just people outside of this fair don't have a good understanding about what architectural millwork is. So my business partner, Barry, who also happens to be my husband, we talked about this. I'm like, oh, you know, I wish that we had, you know, like $50,000, we could hire a great tech team to put together something that would show exactly what was in the room that we could do. And then it dawned on me, I could do it myself. So look at this. So having this, that can be a way of educating. This is up on our newly launched website. And it's great because you can see, here's a project that we did before and after. And the school kids go nuts. They're like, what? Every arrow is what you did? How long did it take you to do it? How much money did it cost? What are you doing behind the bar? Okay, so then it could look like this. So social media is part of the showing it. And this is one of the hits that we had the most like clicks on. And it's only about a booth.
So again, remember what I said about simple and authentic? It's a booth, everybody. It's about loading a booth in a truck. But notice, I think that you saw, I want to just tell the story that real people made it. Real people who have real talent and real skill. And how cool is that to be able to make something like that? That's the message, simple and authentic. You have to be a little bit crazy too, I admit that. And again, so our next S is show it. Show it off, show it off, don't be shy people. Shop visits, anybody can simply email us and say I wanna come for a tour. We have people who say I'm interested but I don't know what it would be like to actually work in a wood shop. Would you let me in? I'm like, sure, I'll let you in. And then, of course, you see their true passion or you don't, right? So shop visits, virtual events. So this is the crazy thing that I got involved in. And then you can see there is my business partner, Barry, and there is our apprentice, Logan, right there which was a collaboration with the Urban Manufacturing Alliance, Design Corps Detroit, and the College for Creative Studies. What we did here was we had all of these design students and designers, and they worked on a challenge with, with us, and they loved us. Seriously, they thought we were rock stars. Everybody needs to have that in their life, right? And so while at first it may sound like, why are they asking me to do something to take away from the time that I could be spending working on a project? But you can see that things like this can really pay off. Of course, everybody's website is your digital front door. Social media, I played you. All you have to do is look at what we do on our social media again. It's always about telling the story, our work, our great employees that are so skilled and how awesome that, our, that this industry is. And then of course, industry events like Manufacturing Day. If you don't know about it, just let me know. I'm happy to talk you through it. And for Manufacturing Day, it could look something like this. So when we had people they could actually come in. We have 9,000 square feet. We host between 110 and 120 aged school kids, all from elementary to high school, right? And how cool is that? We make it a whole big deal. We make it a whole big deal. We have so many students that come, we can't possibly handle it. So we get the company that is the supplier of our copy machine. They come in and volunteer. We get design students from the local university that comes by and hosts our hands-on design center station. It's all could be anything, right? So now the selling part. So now you have them captive either in person or virtually, and you have to sell it. So we have signs like this up all the time, because we put them up and then we never take them down. We want you to join us. We want you to join us, we want you to join us, and we want you to join us. Please come and join us. We tell that story all the time. And it could look something like this. So again, trying to get the message out to young people and to people that maybe are looking to upskill themselves as an employee in the wood industry, which is the new Department of Labor Apprenticeship that you can hear more about tomorrow at our session at 1.30 upstairs. And then there's send it, send it. Okay, so you can download, you can email me and I'm happy to send you what we do. So for manufacturing day, and something that we send out to everybody, we have a brochure, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. This brochure is for students to take home. Take it home, 
after you've been to Manufacturing Day, share it with your parents, share it with your teachers. I give it to workforce development employees because they are talking with people that need to have jobs. And this brochure is really cool. Something that we did on our computer and made copies on our printer, okay? Don't have to spend much money. I'm gonna show you what this brochure looks like in just a second. Most importantly, this could get passed along. And then materials. Materials doesn't have to be fancy. For the Design Core Detroit event, the Design Jam, we sent them, get this, scrap pieces of laminate. They were thrilled. What? You're sending us a piece of laminate? This is the coolest thing. You get to work with laminate? Oh, yeah, we do. And then there's the tangibles to remember. Ah, yes. So pens and books, so yes. We put, give everybody this when they come in, right? So something else to remember us by. So a couple of years ago, Logan said, our apprentice, he said, um, let's do it even better. This time we're gonna be running our CNC making this, right? This coaster. And then we'll have already a lot of them pre-made and put in their little packages, but they can see it actually being made on the CNC. Brilliant. And guess who paid for this? All of our vendors. We're like, do you have any scraps? We want to do this. We're like, oh, yes, we'll send it right away to you. Didn't cost us a penny. And let me just tell you the power of tangibles, people. Since we're all here, and maybe most of us are from out of town, Think about the power of those fancy soaps in your bathroom. How many of you have already eyed them to go in your suitcase? No? Don't do the TV remote, though. They, they don't like that. So the tangibles, am I right? That's really powerful. OK. So here's that brochure. Notice, of course, you know, manufacturing day. You can copy this. Heck, I don't care. Look, this is the money shot right here. Tell them how much money they can make by joining us. On the other side, it's got how can you join us. And it's not just about our company, but it is about how you can join in the many different industries that we touch as custom architectural millwork companies. And then, the last one is surveying it. Survey. Everybody gets this. Every kid gets this. This is how we have 110 to 120 students. They don't all come in at once as one big group. We break them up into groups. But then we have the survey of things like, did this tour change your perception about manufacturing? Circle, yes or no. And then what career options seen today interest you the most? And then, can you see yourself working here? They put it in, and then we have a grand drawing. So what does that look like? It can give you results like this. So what I think really most important is, did it change your perception about manufacturing? In this case, wood manufacturing. I think we did OK, right? And then, can you imagine yourself working here? Really powerful stuff. Now, I have to just laugh. Look at everybody wants to be the CEO. I'm like, OK. But look at what people, what these kids are saying, right? Things like, because it would be fun to make things, even if it was hard. So again, finding your voice to find your workforce. I hope this afternoon I've given you some reason to do it. And remember, school it and show it, sell it, send it, and survey it. And I hope it works for you. I think it will. So thank you so very much. It's been my pleasure.